Good morning, everybody. Today we will continue our lesson energy part three. This is the last part of the lesson. The objectives of this session are determine the mechanical energy of a system and distinguish between conserved and non-conserved mechanical energy of a system. As we have taken, mechanical energy of a system is the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. So, E mechanical equals E kinetic plus E potential. Look at the, the figure 10. Consider figure 10. The free length of the spring is L0 equals 50 centimeter. K equals 20 newton per meter, mass equals 0.2 kilograms. The figure shows the ball which is taken as a particle in a certain position during its descending in an altitude relative to the ground. This altitude is Z equals 30 centimeter and its speed at that position is 1 meters per second. The length of the spring in this position is L equals 60 cm. Determine in this position the mechanical energy of the system, ball, spring, earth, taking the ground as the reference level for the gravitational potential energy. So what do we have in this system? We have kinetic energy because of the motion of the ball, gravitational potential energy because of the position of the ball above the ground, and elastic potential energy because of the stretching of the spring. Calculating all these quantities, we got mechanical energy equals 0.8 joules. The second question, determine the mechanical energy of the system at T0 equals 0, which is the instant at which we release the ball. As we have taken in application 3 in the last session, uh, when the ball is uh, just launched, we can say that it is at a, at a height Z0 equals Z plus X, which is 30 plus 10 centimeter equals 40 centimeter. So GPE0 at this instant equals 0 0.8 joules. There is no kinetic energy, there is no elastic potential energy at the instant where which we release the ball. So mechanical energy equals 0 0.8 joules. Conservation and non-conservation of mechanical energy. The work done by a non-conservative force results in the increase or decrease in the mechanical energy of the system so that this mechanical energy is no more conserved. The question is, what is a non-conservative force? Non-conservative forces include friction, air resistance, normal forces, tension force exerted by inextensible strings, and muscular forces. Whereas conservative forces include gravitational force, restoring force of a spring, and electric force between the plates of the capacitor. In other words, when we have non-conservative forces, the mechanical energy is no more conserved. But if there are no non-conservative forces, or if the sum of their works is zero, that means suppose that there are many non-conservative forces doing works, but the sum of their works is zero, the mechanical energy of the system is conserved. This means it remains constant at any time. So mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy fine. Oh, in other words, the mechanical energy at each instant has a constant value. The kinetic energy and the potential energy of the system vary or may vary, but actually their summation, which is the mechanical energy, is always constant in this case. 
If the mechanical energy of the system is conserved, the variation of the kinetic energy equals the negative variation of the potential energy of the system. Delta Ke equals negative delta Pe, or delta Pe equals negative delta Ke. How? If the mechanical energy is conserved, then kinetic energy at instant 1 plus potential energy at instant 1 equals kinetic energy at instant 2 plus potential energy at instant 2, since the mechanical energy here is conserved as we have just said. Making a certain mathematical uh, uh, calculation, kinetic energy 1 minus kinetic energy 2 equals Pe2 minus Pe1. Kinetic energy 1 minus kinetic energy 2 equals negative K, delta Ke, and Pe2 minus Pe1 equals delta Pe. So this means that the variation of one of the forms of energy equals negative the variation of the other. Look at this figure. It shows a skier sliding on a random trajectory. At point A, the kinetic energy of the skier was 0 joules and his potential energy was 50,000 joules. So his mechanical energy was 0 plus 50,000 equals 50,000. At point B, his kinetic energy increases and his potential energy decreases because he is going down. But the summation of the kinetic energy plus potential energy is still 50,000 joules and so on. This means that there is a change in the kinetic energy and the change in the potential energy in such a way when the kinetic energy decreases, the potential energy increases and vice versa. But in all cases and each at each instant, the mechanical energy is still 50,000 joules. This means that there are no cons non-conservative forces, or at least there are non-conservative forces, but their work is zero. Now, what if the mechanical energy is not conserved? In the case the mechanical energy is not conserved, the variation of the mechanical energy equals the work done by the non-conservative forces. So, work of non-conservative forces equals delta E. Delta E, which means E final minus E initial. And the work done by a force equals the dot product of the force with the displacement of the object. So, W equals F dot R or F dot D equals F times R times cosine theta. Kindly solve this exercise about the vertical motion of the system body spring in two cases. First case, motion without a resistance. This means that motion without non-conservative forces. And in part two, motion with a resistance. This means that motion with non-conservative forces. This is the end of the session. Thank you.